Okay, you guys, so what I was wanting to do real quick is to do a regression analysis where we are going to do a test where our alternative hypothesis is not that like not equal to but it's rather greater than or less than so well, let me set up a scenario real quick for us and then let's go ahead and do it so what we're going to look at is we're going to look at a little bit of data that's already built into our commander and it's based on the income and the expenditure expenditure of sorry expenditure of money for schools all right so basically you know you live in an area everybody who lives there has a spent income spent a set amount of income and they're going to spend so much money on schools and we want to see is there a relationship and well we think that there's probably going to be some relationship so the null hypothesis we're going to say is that beta 1 equals zero is that there's no relationship between the income and expenditure and we think that's crazy we think that that beta one is going to be greater than one or that we think that there's a positive relationship so, sorry greater than zero we think that there's a positive relationship we don't know how big it is but that as you know it by common sense, we think that as an area has more income, uh, that they're going to expend more on their schools. And we'll do an alpha of 0.05. All right, great. So let's go ahead and grab some data and let's see how we do. And we're going to need to do some checks along the way. Uh, but let's go ahead and do it. So if we go over to our R commander, give me a second. Let's go to data in data and packages and read data from an attached package then we can go to i think it's sandwich yep and we're going to go to public schools and if we if you click on the help on selected this is u.s expenditures for public schools um, so we've got a whole bunch of very a uh, whole bunch of observations and two variables so here we go per capita expenditure on schools and per capita income by state in 1997 uh, okay so if we go ahead and click ok and I already had a data set, so I'm just going to override it. I'm going to click on View Data Set, and this is what I've got. So it's got all of these um, these values, expenditure and income for the different states. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and close out of that. All right, so when we do this, we need to be we need to do our checks uh, on our graphics to see can we even do a regression analysis. Uh, so the easiest way to do this is we're going to just go ahead and run the regression analysis and then run the run the additional diagnostic plots so that we can see are we good to go okay so let's go ahead and take a look so if we start off with data or sorry if we go to our statistics we go to our fit models this is a linear regression we're going to say the response is the expenditure and the explanatory value is going to be the income and we can just leave the regression model name as three and click OK. Kind of ignore this stuff right now. Now we want to go to our, oh, let's see where it's at. Uh, if we go back down to the, nope, we're going to go over to the models. There it is. And we'll go to the graphs and we'll go down to the basic diagnostic plots and click OK. And here we go. We've got our basic diagnostic plots. Okay, so we wanted to take a look at our residual plots and we could look at our QQ. So we need to look at a few things. Uh, so we can go through, we need to look at linearity, uh, linearity, normality. Uh, we need to look at independence. centered about zero and we need to look for constant variance okay so first of all is there any major patterns in here and I don't see any major patterns so we'll for our linearity we'll say good normality are we basically clustered about the zero line with 
uh, results fewer and fewer happening further and further away. And let's say that looks good here. Good. We can also look at linearity, remember, on the QQ plot. As long as it follows this line, we're pretty good. We've got one outlier on Alaska. I'm not too worried about that, so normality looks good. Independence. Is there any, like, heavy-duty clumping going on? And you say, well, yeah, there's some clumps here and some clumps here, but it's not this, like, systematic problem. So I will say that independence looks good. Centered about zero. Once again, that guy looks good. We can look at this dashed line, and it looks good to us. And then the last one, constant variance. Do we see any big fanning going on? And I would say, once again, no, that our constant variance looks good good all right so we went through and we did our checks so we are good to go so if we can now kind of drop down and look at what does our output have to say and here is the output that we've got we've got our residuals here uh, we've got the coefficients so we've got our beta of one or so we've got our b0 so that's our intercept that's the negative 151 point i'll just do like 27 and then b1 our slope this is 0 0.068 uh, we'll just do 69 to keep it simple so then our equation is going to be y hat equals and i'll start off with the intercept for this one plus 0 0.069 times x all right so there's our equation Okay, and do we have significant results or not? So we want to look at our p-value. Okay, so what it gives us here is that we have a p-value of, we'll look at this guy. It's very, very small. I want to copy it and I'll paste it. And so if we do e negative 11, this is really going to be 0 0.1234 okay so written out all the way it's like this all right that's what the p-value that it gave and i'm going to tell you right now that that p-value is incorrect it's almost right but it's incorrect so here's what happened so unlike some of our other tests where you know if we did like a two sample t test or our z test uh, those ones it lets us choose you know are we doing a one tail test are we saying greater than less than or not equal to in this version of our of our regression analysis, it doesn't let us do that. And so what it's always doing is it's doing a two-tailed test. All right, so because it's doing the, this two-tailed test, it has given us a p-value that is actually too big. Um, it's actually twice as large as it's supposed to be. So what we can do is we can instead take this p-value and divide it by two. And we do this if we are doing a one-tailed test we know that that is one-tailed because we said that it is greater than less than would also be a one-tailed test um, and so a lot of a lot of what we have done is two-tailed tests but if we get to a one-tailed test it's okay we just have to know what our commander is actually providing us and it is providing us a two-tailed test so if we're doing a one-tailed test the only thing that we have to do is divide that p-value by two that's it all right, so we got our p-value, so we would reject the null. Reject the null, and let's go ahead and write our conclusions, and then we can deal with do we even have a good re good result, and we can do our interpretation there too. So we can say that we collected sufficient evidence at the alpha level of 0 0.05 to reject the claim that there is is no relation no to we'll say no true relationship between a state's uh, income we'll say true mean and their true mean expenditure. Oh, we'll say 
sorry, we'll, we'll, we'll go back to what they said. The state's per capita, per capita income, and their per capita expenditure on public schools. All right, so I said that I'm rejecting the null hypothesis and I can say and claim that there is a true relationship between the two. All right, so that's my concluding statement. Then all I'm talking about is the null and the alternative. That's important. We'll get into like how how big is this relationship later when we talk about the confidence interval. Okay, so let's go ahead and talk about our relationship. Okay, so the relationship, relationship, sorry, uh, found, or so was found to be uh, that for every one additional dollar just look at that data set again that for every additional dollar of Additional dollar of income, income the expenditure on public schools. Wow, sorry about that. Is predicted to increase by and let's put in how much we are like uh, six cents or you know six nine zero point there we go like almost seven cents okay cool now is our linear relationship a good fit well we need to talk about you know well how much of the variability in the mo in the data was explained away by the model so Okay, so this model explained explained only about uh, fifty seven point eight percent of the variability in the data. Uh, this is not an extraordinary a like a very good model. Let's take a picture of it real quick. Let's make a graph. So we'll go to graphs. Let's do a scatter plot. We'll do the x-axis as the income, y-axis as the expenditure, and we want to do a least squares line to get it right. And so the x label, yeah, we'll just auto it real quick and we'll click OK. And so like, yes, there is a pattern here, but there's a lot of variability in this data. Each of these, remember, represents a state, and I'm assuming the District of Columbia. Anyhow, you can go look at the data. There's there's a lot of variability uh, that's uh, that's going on, but there is a linear relationship uh, between the income and the expenditure uh, on the public schools. All right, so let's go ahead and close that out, and then let's give a confidence interval. So we can say that we are 95% confident that the, uh, so we could talk about this in two ways. So we can talk about it as the true slope, or uh, I'm gonna talk about it in this way, very similar to how I talked about the, the relationship, that for every additional, additional dollar spent on, Oh, sorry, additional dollar of per capita 
income in a state the true mean amount spent on public schools will increase by at least, and now we've actually got to do this calculation. We haven't done it yet. All right, so let's go back to our commander and let's figure out this number. We're just looking for one number. So for our confidence interval, uh, so remember if we're doing the interval, we do plus or minus, uh, but that's if we do a one-tailed test, or if, sorry, for a two-tailed test. We're doing a one-tailed test, so we just are going to be doing a minus because we just want to say that hey we think that at least this amount of money is being spent okay so how do we do that so if we look at our well let me just put it i guess sure we'll put it here we can do our confidence bound i'll just do cb and so this is going to equal we need our slope Great, and we need to plus, and we now we need to take our standard error. Now we gotta come over here. The standard error of our slope is this guy right here. So I'm gonna copy that, and I'm gonna paste it. Great, there's the standard error. And now I need to multiply by this T critical. Okay, well that's not too hard to do. I just gotta go over and grab the pieces. So if we go to distributions, continuous distribution, we're doing a T distribution. Great, so we got a T, and then we go over to t quantiles and we need the probabilities okay well the probability is just going to be our alpha value 0 0.05 great degrees of freedom we got to go down here and we see that hey it gives us 48 degrees of freedom and we'll go ahead and click type that 48 and we can do lower tail that's fine we could do upper tail it really doesn't matter we're just we need the 0 0.05 click ok and it gives us as a negative value. Remember, if we did a positive, or if we did a right tail, it just would have given us the other direction. So it would have given us a positive number. All that we need is the absolute value of this. So I'm just gonna copy it. And that T crit's gonna go away and become this value. All right, so let's figure out what that actually equals. Oh, and we don't want to add it. We need to, sorry. We need to subtract it. And that's because we are doing a greater than test. Remember, if we have our distribution and it's greater than, and we want to say, you know, what the confidence bound is, we have to go below so that we can say that it's going to be at least this much. And I've talked about that in some other videos if you need a refresher on that. Okay, and then we can go ahead and click enter. And we've got this like five cents. And I can put it in here. Let's put a dollar sign and we'll round it to by five. Okay, so we are 95% confident that for every additional dollar spent of per capita income in the state, that the true mean amount spent on public schools will increase by at least five and a half cents. Uh, or instead of will increase, we'll say, we'll say increases. It sounds a little better. Increases by at least five cents. All right. And there we have it. So this is how we would do a significance testing if we had, um, if we were doing a one-tailed test with regression analysis. Um, generally, uh, I've seen more of our regression analysis done as two-tailed, uh, but we can definitely do a one-tailed test as well. Uh, so uh, some of these popped up, I think, in some of the homework assignments. So this is how you would handle it. Good luck, you guys.